Hey, back again with my eco-friendly home top 10. Now, I've, you've probably seen the video from 1 to 5, so now I'm going to do 6 to 10. So number 6 on my list is switching from normal globes to power-saving globes. Now, this is a power-saving globe. They use considerably less power and they emit considerably less greenhouse gases than a regular globe. I know the Australian government has got some kind of plan by um, eliminating regular globes by 2020 or something like that. Uh, not fast enough as far as I'm concerned, but anyway, I've changed all the globes in my house to these and I've noticed a difference in my power bill, like a considerable difference. So the initial outlay with these, although they are more expensive and you might think, mm, I don't want to pay six bucks for a globe or whatever, you'll save heaps. So the money that you outlay to begin with um, will come back to you in savings on your power bill and you can get all different sizes too. This is a little one that I've got in a lamp. You can get longer ones, um, shorter ones than this, curly ones, different wattages, all kind of, for every type of globe you would regularly need you can get one of these to do the same job. So next time you're in the supermarket, you can get them everywhere now. So next time you're in the supermarket, have a look and just think about changing over to that because you'll save money in the long run. Uh, number seven is to go to solar hot water. As a, now, I'd like to go to solar completely for the house. I just can't afford it now. I think I've got a few quotes from a different, few different places and it's anywhere from $23,000 to $28,000 and anywhere in between. So I can't really afford it now. So I, if I had the money, I'd do it, but I can't. So I'm saving now to get solar hot water. So that's at least something. Solar hot water. You're gonna. Everyone uses hot water on a daily basis, and you'll save heaps on your on your power bill as well with that over time. Once you've kind of, you will utilize. You will use up the the costs of what it, the initial outlay of buying it over time. But more so than that, I think it's important that we just try and eliminate the power that's coming to us from power stations and coal furnaces and all that kind of stuff. Um, the turbines that are generated from coal and things like that. So anything we can do like that is a good idea. And if you can get it for free from the sun, so much the better. Initial outlay is not much and you got it for life then, so that's a good way to go. Which brings me to number eight, change to green power. Now, a lot of... Um, power suppliers have green alternatives now. Now, I'll go through the situation with mine. I changed over to green power not long ago. Um, someone told me about it. I had no idea, to be honest, about being able to change to green power with um, power um, suppliers. So all I did, I rang up. Hi. Um, okay, have you got a green alternative for power? Yes, we do. Um, can I change over to it? How, can I do it over the phone? Yes, you can. Is it going to cost me more money to go to green power? No, it's not. Okay, let's get into it. Eight minutes later, it was done. I was on the phone. I, I, I looked at the phone when I got off it, just out of curiosity, and it was about nine minutes or something like that. So that's all it took. So just get off the computer, get onto your phone, ring your power supplier, ask them if they've got green power alternatives. Most of them will. If they don't, they should have. If they don't, switch to someone else, if you can. Um, and change. It, it took me nine minutes on the phone and that was it. It was all done. So now all the power that comes to my house is generated through green alternatives, solar, wind, etc. And it's easy to do. Just one phone call. So if we kind of band together as such, um, if there's a, you know, a lot of people are going to green power, then the demand is going to be greater for green power. So the supply they're going to have to produce is going to be greater too. So they're going to have to build more solar farms, more wind um, farms, all that kind of stuff to accommodate for the demand of those kind of green alternatives. So even if like 35% of people in Australia or whatever country you're in um, just ring up and change over, it's a dramatic impact. And I think if we can generally all go over to that in time, I think it's a good turn, but we'll see how we go. Just make a phone call and see if you can get it. It's an easy way to go. Uh, number nine. A bit, a bit of a funny one, um, flushed less. Now, Australia is still in the grips of a terrible drought that's been going on for years and years. Um, we've had a bit of rain lately, as you probably saw with my video with the hailstorms, kind of freak rains now and then. But the drought's far from over, especially in um, more arid parts of Australia. It's really bad news still. So anything you can do to save water is a good turn, I think, using your grey water and flushing less. Like there's that classic line in Meet the Fockers, 
about if it's yellow, let it mellow, if it's brown, flush it down. So obviously you don't want to be just, you know, letting the toilet pile up and, you know, become rank. But if you can just flush less, like just think of it, like even if you pee out in the garden every once in a while or, or whatever, anything you can, like just flush less. Like even if you flush three times less a day, every day for a family, that's heaps. Um, you know, it's just uh, little things like that we can save water, little increments like that really go a long way when people do them en masse. Uh, number 10, the last one, is to plan your extensions if you're extending on a home or if you're building a new home. Obviously, if you're building a new home, talk to your architect about different eco ways you can incorporate um, the design of the house into like becoming more of an eco-friendly house, the positioning of it, take into consideration the directions where the sun's going to be. It's higher in summer, it's lower in winter. So you want more light coming into the house during winter and you want less coming in in summer. The positioning of trees around the house, insulation, um, the cooling system, even things like uh, windows, positioning of windows and doors, what's going to be letting heat out, double glazing, if you can create some kind of nice breeze coming through the house to keep the house cooler, all of those things. Architects should be right up with that stuff nowadays. I'm sure there must be a demand for it and people want to have alternatives for the design of the house to be more eco-friendly. So if you're planning an extension, talk to the architect. And if you're building a home, talk to the architect there and try and incorporate solar hot water and a water tank, if you can too, in the building of your home as well. So there's my top 10. If you have any more, if you have any questions about what I've been talking about, give me a yell. If you have any more, give me a yell too, and I'll um, try and compilate another one. So I'll do another top 10. All right, thanks. I'll see you soon.